Amen. The rest of the story is that he, he came to baptize his aunt in Jesus' name tonight. He said, she's ready to be baptized. I said, well, you come and baptize her then. Amen. Thank the Lord. So Sister Vetti King's going to go down in Jesus' name tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. We love all of our village people too. Amen. If you're village people, lift your hands. Praise the Lord. All of our village people. The Philip, where's? Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. We love all of our Malvern people, Hot Springs people, village people, royal people. <laughs> Everywhere people. We just love people. Praise God. Uh, so good to have. We, we even love our people from Atlanta, too. Praise the Lord. So Jessica, good to have you here. Amen. Sister Julia Pullman, so thankful where the Lord pulled you. Amen. The Holy Ghost pulling people. Sister, the Fernal's grandson, Fred, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Amen. Noah, good to see you. Lord bless you. Amen. The Morrisons, it's always good to have y'all. Amen. I'm so thankful for uh, everyone that's here. Our prayers are for those that are sick today, traveling, skipping, sleeping. Amen. Pray for everybody. Amen. Well, I'm going to preach just a little while, see what the Lord will do. Amen. God's been dealing with me, and I, I want to be obedient to, the, to what I feel. We'll be hearing from Brother Arthur tonight. Maybe. Amen. Usually we hear from the Holy Ghost on Sunday night. We'll, we'll try what we can do. Amen. When you praise God. <laughs> Pray in church. You got to get everybody, to, like Jesus said, if you can get them to sit down, I can feed them. <laughs> you get them to sit down, I'll break the bread. Amen. Sometimes it's hard to get people seated when they got fire shut up in their bones. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you got your Bible, Hebrews, the fourth chapter. If you don't have it, Brother Daniel has got it for you. Amen. The Bible says... For we have not, everybody say we have not, and high priest which cannot, everybody say cannot, cannot, cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. I'm going to preach for a little while from this title, What You Will Not Find at the Altar. Amen. What You Will Not Find. Set your Bibles down. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your voices to the Lord. Come on, prayer warriors, help me right now. Come on, cry out to Jesus as loud as you can. We need you, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to come into this place right now to open up every ear to hear the word of God. Oh, God, mold us and shape us, God. Give people the liberty to pray. Give them the liberty to repent of their sins, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout that name. Uh, that name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Now in a way of worship, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, God, and we thank you. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. I want to preach about what you will not. Everybody say you will not. You will not find at the altar. Amen. The scripture right before this, uh, it begins and it tells us that 
Jesus is our high priest. Everybody say, he's our high priest. And then it says, we have not, everybody say not. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Now, this uh, particular sentence contains something that is called a double negative. We have not something that can not. Amen. So let me just preach it like the preacher intended for it to be said. Our high priest is and can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Amen. He is touched. Amen. Let me do a word uh, study for just a moment, and then I want to preach to you what God has laid upon my heart. Amen. It says that uh, touched by the feeling means to be affected with the same feeling. Amen. This word means to be affected and to feel the same feeling as somebody else. Amen. In our English language, it's called to sympathize. Amen. A lot of people think they sympathize with others, but if you have not been where they are, you cannot sympathize with someone else. Amen. We have empathy for others. We have compassion for others, but it takes a widow woman to sympathize with another widow woman. Amen. It takes a mother with a disabled child to sympathize with a mother who's got a disabled child. Amen. I want to preach to you that we don't have a God who's wondering what we're feeling like today. We're not serving a God who is foreign to what we're going through today. Thank you for that today. Amen. But we have a God that knows exactly where we're at right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you come to the church uh, talking to other people trying to get sympathy, you're talking to the wrong person. Amen. Because all they can do is empathize with you. I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm sorry you went through that. I'm sorry you're feeling like that. But I can tell you, man, uh, that if you come down uh, and get on this altar and begin to cry out to the name of Jesus, uh, it won't be somebody who don't know. But it'll be somebody that'll be moved. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord together right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus doesn't empathize with us. He sympathizes with us. The Bible said our infirmities, which is our weaknesses, which is our, can I just say it like this? Our humanity, our instability, our uncertainty, our frailness, our weakness, our sickness. Say, how do you know that? Because the Bible said, at all points, at all points, I'm telling you, I've been studying. Uh, the Bible said at all points, uh, which means each, every, any, all, whole, everyone, all thing, everything collectively. Which tells me it don't matter what you came through the door with this morning, Jesus uh, has already been there. Whatever you were dealing with, uh, when you walked through the door, uh, he's already been there. Come on, help me right now. Amen, the Bible teaches us that God was manifest in the flesh, which means Jesus was God incarnate or embodied in flesh. Amen. He's not the vice president of the man-made trinity. 
but Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. He was seen of angels. He said, when you've seen me, you have seen the Father. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And that Word became, that Word became God, who is a spirit, robed himself in flesh, and he came to earth, and he began to experience the things that you are dealing with today. That's how he became your advocate. That's how he became the mediator. That's, that's how he became the one that can sympathize with people who are tempted by the devil. Well, nobody knows what I'm feeling like. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Oh yeah, I know a man. I said, I know a man. <laughs> Amen. Well, I, I'm going through this. I lost my husband. I lost my wife. My children are running around. All these people are doing me wrong. I know a man. Oh, I know a man. Oh, I'm broken hearted. Hey, man, I've been hurt by people. I, I just feel like I can't go to church anymore. I know somebody who can sympathize with you this morning. I know somebody who's got some stripes on his back by people that were supposed to be his friends. I know a man who, who the man he was eating with stabbed him in the back. I know a man. I know a man who'll take all your excuses away. As the Bible said, at all points, he was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Amen. Because of this life, because of the things that he went through, the things that he suffered, they now play a role and a factor in how he's going to deal with you this morning. Amen. I want to preach to you what you're not going to find at the altar. You're not going to find a God that is cold and indifferent. You're not going to find a God who does not understand what you're dealing with. You're not going to find a God who doesn't know what you're going through right now. Hey man, you're gonna find a God today that knows exactly where you are at. Hey man, not only does he know where you're at, but the Bible said it moves him. How many times did the Bible say that Jesus is walking around and he has Compassion. How many times is he moved when he sees the hurting of people? How does that happen? You get hurt first. Why does God allow these problems to happen? Maybe God allows some things in your life where you won't be such a hard individual. Maybe you won't be so judgmental. Uh, uh, you, we can get all self-righteous uh, and point our finger at everybody. Well, they need to do that. Uh, they need to do that. Uh, they need to change that. Honey, wait till you get in those shoes. You just hang on a minute because uh, life's got a way uh, of coming all the way around. Uh, When you get the Holy Ghost in you, you get the Spirit of God in you, it ought to make you sympathize. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Come on, lift your hands to the Lord together. First Kings, the 18th chapter, the 24th verse, the Bible said, and call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock for yourself and dress it first for ye are many and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. Let me tell you something, church. Any other altar then the altar of Jesus Christ is going to end up just like. Hey man, I feel like preaching to this church. Uh, you need to get your eyes off of the world. Get your eyes off of the vaccine. Uh, get your eyes off of the news. Uh, get your... Itadaboshataya. I'm telling you, any other place that you begin to pray, it'll be just like the prophets of Baal. It won't be heard. Yeah, go ahead and bump into your country music star in the airport and begin to tell him about your problems and tell me what he does. Security. Get this crazy man out of here. Oh, yeah, get your movie star and call him and tell him about your problems. Get your drug buddy and call him and tell him all about your problems. Jump up and down. Cut yourself. It ain't going to help because you're praying at the wrong altar. Well, I don't know why. I don't know why, but amen, it seemed like I called them and they were short with me uh, and wouldn't talk to me very long. You want to know why? Because they don't know where you're at. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I feel Jesus in this place right now. Amen. But let me tell you what you're not going to find at this altar. You're not going to find a God that won't answer you. You're not going to find a God that's going to judge you. Well, you should have, well, you should have beat you up and slap you around. Shame on. Praise God. Shame on the church. Shame on the church. Amen. For judging people. You know what we ought to be doing? We don't understand people. We don't understand their trial. We don't understand what they've been through. We ought to say, guess what? I know a man that will hook you up if you'll just lift your hands. And just start praying until the Holy Ghost comes out. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord together. Give me some volume. 
Join up with somebody right now. Come on, let's pray together right now for one moment. Come on, it's time to quit praying at the altar of Facebook. It's time to quit praying at the altar of Instagram. Uh, pouring all your heart out to your neighbor and people that can't help you. Uh. Come on, lift your hands to God right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel God in this house right now. If people would just come to an altar, quit believing the lies of the devil. Amen. The devil will tell you when I get there, uh, nothing's going to happen. When I get there, nothing's going to happen. I've been too bad. I've caused too much trouble. I've walked out of church too many times. Uh, I've turned my back on Jesus too many times. Oh, uh, Kanahasataya. The devil will tell you, uh, when you get here, you're going to find a God that's cold and doesn't want you. That ain't my high priest. <laughs> that ain't my high priest. That ain't the one I'm serving. <laughs> because when I get down, uh, I get right back up. Uh, and I go right back to the altar. Uh, and I cry out to the same Jesus. Uh, and when I cry out again, uh, I feel that Holy Ghost. I feel that power uh, coming back on me. Uh, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you there's somebody in this building that you don't need to sit one more day. You don't need to listen to one more lie of the devil, but you need to make up your mind. When I come to that altar, I'm going to come boldly before the throne of grace. He knows, he knows, he knows where I've been. It meant a lot of people try to take the scripture come boldly, try to use it as something disrespectful, like I can get whatever I want. That ain't why he wrote that. He wrote that to let you know that God was tempted. God was tempted at all points, just like you. And when you walk in uh, and you got tears coming down your face, he's going to know, I know what they're feeling. <laughs> and when you're struggling, uh, can I live this life? Uh, can I do right? Uh, can I do God's will? Uh, can I really do what it takes? Uh, he knows uh, right where you're being. Uh, he's had the cup in his hand before. Oh, and his first thought was, Lord, uh, let this cup pass. Just kidding. Uh, nevertheless, uh, not my will, but thy will be done. Uh, he knows uh, what you're struggling with. Uh, he knows. Uh, the he told He don't just know, but he's moved. Praise God. I can talk to somebody who lost their daddy as a young man, and I can have compassion on them. 
I can sympathize with somebody that lost their daddy as a young man. You know how I can? I've already walked through that. As a 21-year-old boy, I lost my daddy. And I can, I can tell you exactly how it feels. When somebody goes through what I've been through, uh, I'm telling you, I can feel the same feelings. It's like it comes back. It's like it's a fresh feeling all over. When people walk in here and the devil's been tempting them, the devil's been trying to pull them away from God's will for their life. You're not going to meet a God at this altar with his hands folded saying if you want him, you can have him. It ain't going to be like that at all. But when you come to this altar, you're going to find a God that will open up his arms Amen. He will open up his arms. If he has to, he'll sober you up. I rebuke every lie of the devil. Amen. There's going to be liberty. There's going to be Holy Ghost Church. There's going to be power in this place. People. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What you're not going to find at this altar is a church that's going to judge you. Oh, yeah. I've heard of people that would not even move because they were afraid somebody would wonder what's wrong with them. I don't care if you've had the Holy Ghost a hundred years. This altar, this ought to be a place that you love. Praise God. Well, I don't want to pray this morning because I am afraid... They might think I need the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord, I need another dose of the Holy Ghost. I, I'm wanting to get intoxicated one more time. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean you're a sissy. It means that you understand you are humanity. And if you get wisdom and understand I am humanity, I need God to help me. Come on, somebody needs to respond to the Holy Ghost right now. Lift your hands to the Lord together. I've been hurt by religion. I've been hurt by preachers. I've been hurt by pastors. I've been hurt by people. Jesus knows. The man that stuck his bread in his cup sold him out. He knows how bad it hurts to be stabbed by people that you've loved, supported, and... Oh, I feel Jesus right now. I'm telling you, there's a God that wants to take the cut, and he wants to... He wants to mend it. Take that Holy Ghost needle and thread and start sewing up all the hurts uh, and all the damage. Uh, Total bullshit, I 
I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up this altar. Man, I feel Jesus right now. I could preach all day. Might have already done it. He got no more I just feel somebody hurting. Come to tell you God's hurt just like you have. You're not going to find a fake experience at the altar. You're not going to find Baal at the altar of Jesus. A God that won't hear you. A God that's sleeping. A God that's going on vacation. You ain't going to find that at this altar. You're going to find a God that wants to heal you. <laughs> Come on, just begin to cry out to the Lord. Come on, you're going to find peace. You're going to find direction. Yeah. 